Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to Recipes with Ben. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about some relatively inexpensive items that I use pretty much all the time in my kitchen and in my videos and everything like that. So for me, a bunch of these items have been complete game changers, as well as just some basic items I use for a long time. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The first thing I want to talk about is mason jars. I use these all the time. Uh, and I have them in a variety of sizes. They come in either narrow mouth or wide mouth, depending on the type you buy. The wide mouth are nice because you can really get in there and wash them, and then they also are able to go into your dishwasher. What I use mason jars for a lot of times is fermentation, so whether that be pickling or making mustard or you know, lacto-fermenting any type of vegetable from peppers to you know, jalapenos or anything else like that. They're really great for that. They have a lot of things that can screw onto them for adjustments. And then secondly, the other thing I like to use them for is just kind of a day-to-day, -day, anything that kind of needs to be stored in either my fridge or something I take you know, to work. I can put any kind of food to be reheated because they're glass, they're microwave safe, they have a nice screw lid so liquids and soups can fit inside of them. And they're just overall you know, a useful item to have. As I said, they come in a variety of sizes, anywhere from 32 ounce to five ounce and anywhere in between. The next thing we'll talk about is a relatively new item to my kitchen, and that's a scale. So I use a kitchen scale for a bunch of different things. The main thing, obviously, is that it's to weigh out items. So, you know, I use it every morning for weighing out coffee. For my coffee, if I wanted it to be consistent, I weigh it, I weigh it out. And so that's for me, you know, for an espresso shot, that's 20 grams of coffee for my espresso or 50 grams to make my large French press. I also need to use it for things when it comes to, say, pickling or lacto-fermenting, where I need to know an exact weight of, say, salts that I'm adding so that I can do a proper fermentation, as well as adding salts to any of my brewing stuff. And then finally, I also use them a lot for weighing out grain, so I know the exact you know pound of grain that I'm using. The nice thing about the scale is that it has you know anywhere from ounces to grams, depending on what you're using for. The other great thing about it is it really helps with the consistency, and so. The thing I want to use it for as well is for baking. So flour, you want to weigh out your flour whenever you say bake a bread or make a tortilla or anything like that. And that will really help make from consistency from batch to batch to batch. Another item that I have been recently using a lot and I use it specifically again in the morning when it comes to coffee as well as a lot of my brewing stuff. And there's other applications besides those two items, but it's a thermometer. A thermometer is great because it can, most of them, like the ones I have, have both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Uh, they have, the one I use also is really nice because it has a magnetic backing, so I can stick in anything that's metal. So a lot of times it will just go on the front of my microwave or the, above my stove that's magnetic. The great thing about this is that I, when I use it for coffee, you know, I like to heat up my water for my French press up to 180 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit because I find that's the perfect temperature. So it allows me every morning to heat my water in my, my electric kettle. And once I hit 180, I turn it off, you know, pour it over the rest of the coffee. Other items that I know would be really good and useful for, which I just haven't had the, you know, use yet, is if I was trying to make something like a caramel. Caramel has this, or any other candy sugar things, because they have to hit this very, very specific temperature. The one thing I do use it a lot for is when I'm brewing. So I want to make sure that, you know, if when I'm cooling down my water, I hit my correct temperature when it's cooling down or in the mash, if I want to measure the mash temperature, open it up, you know, flick it in there, take a temperature reading. And also because it is just a metal top, when it comes to anything that comes with my beer, I can just quickly dunk it in some little sanitizer, swish it around and dunk it in my beer to see the temperature. Another thing which I don't really have experience for, but a thermometer is really useful for, is measuring the internal temperature of meat. So if you're barbecuing or making you know, pork roast or turkey for Thanksgiving dinner, you wanna know that the internal temperature is there and by having some kind of digital thermometer, you can stick it inside and get an accurate reading of the temperature inside and know what kind of dumbness. It will help, the temperature will help you determine whether it's medium to rare and anywhere in between. Another relatively new item that I really like that I think is a great kind of greener alternative to what a lot of people use is mixing bowls that come with lids. So I have a bunch that they kind of look like Russian stacking dolls 
you know, they come with about a five, I think it's a five pack from, you know, really small to really big. These are great for, you know, kneading doughs inside of them. Or if you want to make something like coleslaw, you can place it in there. And then because they have a lid, you can click it inside. You don't need to use plastic wrap or, you know, tin foil, which is disposable. And then you can throw that in your fridge or, you know, and because these are not disposable, you can rinse them off and then also just most of these are dishwasher safe and same with the actual you know bowls themselves i mean mixing bowls have all sorts of purposes you know as i said doughs it can be used for if you want to make sauerkraut um, and you need to soak the cabbage in there same thing with kimchi but and honestly because i said mixing bowls have such a wide variety but it's just really having that clickable lid that goes on top of it so let me know what you use your mixing bowls for i'm sure you use them for a variety of purposes that i just haven't mentioned One of the items I'm sure that you, most of you have in your kitchen is a cutting board. And I used to use a lot of wooden cutting boards, but the problem is that sometimes if you don't clean them right away, stuff gets stuck to them. So what I found is if I switch to these kind of plastic, but very thick um, cutting boards that are dishwasher safe, they're so much easier to use and so much easier to clean. You know, I mostly just use it for cutting up vegetables, whether that be going into some kind of stir fry or for some kind of pickling item or, you know, chopping up some kind of garlic. You know, these are really easy to use. You know, you can rinse them pretty quickly and then you can throw them in your dishwasher with the rest of your stuff. Most of what I use my cutting board pretty much falls into two categories. And that includes cutting up things like fruits and vegetables and bread or using it for when I make dough. So if I'm making a tortilla or a loaf of bread, I use them to roll out the dough or knead it on there. Same thing with pizza dough. I use it a lot for, you know, flouring it first and then kneading the pizza dough on there before placing it in the oven. The thing is that there are two types of like plastic, you know, dishwasher safe cutting boards, but the one I like is a little bit thicker and that's because the thinner cheap ones are kind of cheap. They'll actually warp due to the heat inside them and maybe they're not actually dishwasher safe. <laughs> I know they're saying that you want to use the right tool for the right job. So for that, what I mean in this case when I'm talking about knives is you pretty much want to use the right knife for the right thing. But you know, buying a whole variety of knives can be kind of expensive. So what you really just need is a single chef's knife. And the reason why is that this is extremely sharp. So be fair or that you can cut yourself on that. But a sharper knife is better than a duller knife. Because with a sharp knife, it allows you to get a good clean cut without you know wobbling through something. And also with the chef knives, it gives you a good amount of weight behind it so you can use leverage to cut all of your stuff. So, you know, as I said, you can use this to cut a variety of fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, you can cut up bread this way and a lot of other items. But I do just find a single good knife is makes all the difference. And for me, I use a big chef's knife like this for literally everything I cook, right? Whether it be potatoes, whether it be some kind of vegetable, I literally use it in every meal from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All right, and the last item we'll talk about on this list is pans. And this is kind of a twofer because I typically think that I only use two types of pans in general. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use pots, but if you're trying to get the best bang for your buck, there are two types of pans that I recommend. And that includes a big, large a saute pan and a large saucepan. The bigger the better, honestly, because it allows you, with the ones that I have, I can cook about four servings worth of food in them. A nice saute pan allows me to saute all sorts of vegetables, whether that be for some kind of like fajita dish or, you know, frying up my breakfast in there, or, you know, as I've used in the channel, I've shown it for making tomato sauce. The nice big saucepan ones, they have a good use because they can be used for sauces, right? So if you want to simmer something or you know, like I've used them previously on one of my videos for making SOG, where I actually can, you know, because they come with a lid, you can close it in there and seal in the heat and allow the flavors to simmer. Another good use for this type of thing is anything that has to do with cheese that you want to melt. So if you're looking for like, you know, making a quesadilla, you can use this as well for that. Or, you know, making a burger where you want the cheese to melt on top of that. I use it for my black bean burgers all the time. I do think that you could use the big saucepan if you're desperate for probably making rice or pasta. It's really up to you. If you just don't, if you only want one pan or two pans, these are the great ones to start out. Again, I use these pans for pretty much every meal, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It doesn't matter. You can use them for heating up soups, anything else. And with all that said, we've come to the end. 
let me know what your favorite is or what you use all the time in your cooking. If you're new to the channel, click the bell and subscribe. If you found any of this helpful, give it a big like. Until next time, have a good day.